Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another, you got it, Hobo Technos product review. If you've ever heard of the brand Bibidi before, they've been around for a couple of years producing a budget LFP 500 watt power station called the CN505. This was reviewed by just about everybody on YouTube, and even I had one back in 2020 during the pandemic where brands were falling off the face of the planet. Long story short, my contact disappeared and I never finished that review. Now they've changed their name to FF Power and have produced an impressive looking 2000 watt lithium iron phosphate power station at a crazy budget price. It's called the P2001, but is it any good? Let's find out. Inside the FF Power is a 2027 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery rated at 3500 cycles or 10 years of daily cycling. As for size and weight, we'll go ahead and put that down here at the bottom of the screen. As for the design, it does have a color LCD display that shows input and output watts, battery percentage with icon, time to charge and discharge, along with various warning icons. As for the inverter, this sports a 2000 watt pure sign inverter with six, count them, 20 amp outlets on the side. And as for ways to charge, there are the typical three. Now FF Power does things a little differently because they have a compartment in the top where you can store the various cables. In fact, you can fit all the cables it comes with. When you open the box, don't go searching around in the box for the cables. <laughs> That's where they are. So it does come with the standard AC wall charging cable. This does not have a brick. It does have the charger built in. This charges at 1100 watts from AC wall power, and that takes only about two hours to charge this to full. Now, of course, this is charged by solar as well. Now, this supports up to 500 watts of solar and under ideal conditions can charge this as fast as five hours. Something to note, they are using Anderson Power Pull as the input, which is a rarity nowadays. Everybody wants to use something goofy when they should be using Anderson Power Pull. Of course, it comes with an MC4 to Anderson adapter, and I would like to see more power stations switch to either using XT60 connectors or Anderson Power Pull with the silly things like eight millimeter barrel plugs. And of course, finally, it charges from 12 or 24 volt vehicle. You can charge this from your 12 volt car in about 16 hours, or if you're charging from a 24 volt source, it only takes about eight hours. Now this unit does in fact support simultaneous charging from both AC and DC sources up to a maximum of 1600 watts, which allows this to charge from zero to full in just about 90 minutes. Now that's pretty impressive for such a new brand. Now as for 12 volt output types, there are three, which is a little out of the ordinary. Of course you have the typical cigarette lighter socket, good for 10 amp output, and they include an XT60 output rated at 10 amps, which allows you to have a much more stable connection other than the wonky cigarette lighter output. So yes, you can actually use this to wire into a fuse box or your van or some kind of other rig and power 12 volt appliances. Now 10 amps isn't very much, that's only 136 watts because the output on this is regulated at 13.6 volts. Lastly, they do offer a pair of 5521 barrel plug outputs rated at three amps each. As for USB outputs, the FF power is very well rounded. They offer six USB outputs total, a pair of USB-A, what I call dinosaur ports, a pair of 18 watt quick charge ports, and a pair of USB-C power delivery ports rated at 100 watts each. That's a lot of USB power for a 2000 watt power station. And I do like the fact that they do include all three different kinds of outputs. Do note that all of these USB ports are output only. You cannot charge the FF power with USB. As for other features, the P2001 does offer a 10 millisecond switching UPS or uninterruptible power supply feature. We're gonna go ahead and test this out in a moment to see if it works with computers. Now, as for the warranty, hold on to your britches because FF Power is offering a default factory warranty of five years on this product. That's truly amazing from such a new small brand. And of course, I took the FF Power P2001 into my secret laboratory here where I performed 
all kinds of crazy experiments on it, including, yes, let's all say it together now, a double-fisted bang, bang. battery capacity test. As you can see from the results of the DC battery capacity test, it scored 1,440 watt hours out of 2,027, or 71%. As for the results of the AC battery capacity test, it scored a little bit better at 1,550 watt hours out of 2,027, or 76%. These results are unfortunately below average across all brands. I even ran the DC test twice using a completely different tool to make sure it was correct. And I actually got even worse results. So I used the best of the two results for this video. Your sine wave check under load. I have the FF power running under a thousand watt load. Here's what the sine wave looks like. Nice and clean at 110 volts, 60 Hertz. Inverter capacity test. This is where we push the FF Power's 2000 watt inverter to the limit. And for that, we're gonna need none other than dun, dun, dun! the solar degenerator. Okay, there we are at 2700. We still got a pretty good sine wave. Still 109 volt, 60 Hertz. Adding the solar degenerator right after 3000, we're good. We're at 3200, we're still good and it shuts down at 3200. So that's a pretty excellent result for a 2000 watt inverter. It lets you hit 3200 watts for a few seconds. So this will certainly handle things like air conditioners, residential refrigerators that have a high surge capacity. Next test is the inverter capacity or heat soak test where I'll run this at its 2000 watt inverter limit for at least five minutes to make sure it doesn't do anything crazy like throw parties when you're not at home raid the refrigerator, start smoking, smelling funny, like BO, drinking, all that stuff. We wanna make sure that the FF power well behaves under full load. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and try the test first at 2300 watts, which is above the rated capacity, but we'll see, can it do it for five minutes? Okay, at just under two minutes, it triggered at 2300 watts. So let's go ahead and turn it down some and try the test again. All right, there we are at 2000 watts. Let's see if we can make it the five minutes. And there we have it, no problems, running at 2050 watts for five minutes. And here we are about a meter away, the inverter fans are running on maximum. So about 56 decibels. So it's not quiet, but it's not loud. I have to say this is probably mid-range noise. Uh, it may bother some people and it won't bother others. Max charge rate test. This is where we determine how fast can we charge the FF power. I currently have it plugged into AC wall power and it is charging at 1100 watts, which is its maximum. So what about charging from 12 volt, like from a car battery or a vehicle? Well, I have my variable voltage charger set to 13 volts. It is outputting exactly 10 amps for 130 watts of charging. That's pretty good. This is about the upper safety limit. Do you want to pull at 12 volts? Otherwise you start melting cigarette lighter sockets or blowing fuses. So let's go ahead and turn this up to solar panel voltage. A single solar panel around 200 watts will generally do about 20, 21 volts. And I have 21 volts. Again, 10 amps. It is now inputting 200 watts. Now it does say here on the side, 500 watts max input 12 to 48 volts at 15 amps. So let's go ahead and crank this up to 48 volts and see exactly how much solar does it take? Now this power supply can do 20 amps. The FF power is still only pulling 10 amps at 48 volts, so it maxes out at 520 watts. Let's see, how much more can I actually push into it by raising the voltage? 49 volts, it's still going, 51. And at 52 volts, it shuts down. So it does reset itself, so once you say you exceed voltage accidentally, and then you back the voltage down, it does automatically reset. That's a really nice feature. I wish a lot more power stations would do this. So if you accidentally 
exceed the VOC on your panel, say it's an especially cold day, it will reset and just go back to charging. You can see 520 watts is the maximum. Okay, what about simultaneous charging? Can you charge from AC and DC at the same time? So we are putting in 500 watts of fake solar. Let's go ahead and plug it into the wall at the same time and see what happens. So far so good, it's still taking 500 from solar and now it is charging simultaneously from here and the wall. Now 1100 watts is typically the limit. So it does in fact allow you to put full solar in and full AC power at the same time for 1600 watts of charging. It says at 50% full, it'll only take 50 minutes to actually completely charge this thing. So 1600 watts with a 2000 watt hour battery is pretty fast. That's about 90 minutes for a complete charge. That's pretty darn fast. Now it does say in the user manual that the FF power does have a 10 millisecond switching UPS. So that means it's got a relay inside that when it detects the power goes out, the inverter takes over in 10 milliseconds, which should be plenty fast for a computer. So first let's check the sine wave and see what happens when we add or remove power. So let's go ahead and watch, you see the voltage there is 115 volts, 60 Hertz, pretty good sine wave. Let me go ahead and shut the power off from the grid and see what happens to the inverter. Okay, it drops immediately to 110 volts, 60 hertz. No change in the sine wave. Now, that's basically being powered from the inverter. Let's bring AC wall power back in again from the grid. You hear that click, you see the change in voltage. The sine wave doesn't really seem to budge. Let's try that again. Yeah, it barely budges. So of course, the only way to prove this switch is fast enough for a computer is to actually use one. Here we have a 16 year old laptop with the battery removed. It's being powered exclusively from the old Dell brick. It's going into the inverter, which right now it's actually being powered from the wall because the grid is coming in through the UPS relay, sending power directly to the laptop. So it's not being powered from the inverter yet. Let's go ahead and turn the power off from the grid and see, will the laptop stay on? Okay, so place your bets. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah, that was pretty instant. I hear the click of the relay and the laptop stayed on. Let's go ahead and turn the power back on and make sure it works both ways. Yep, beeps, now it's back to charging again. Let's go ahead and try it one more time just to make sure the results are consistent. Three, two, one. Yep. No problem, the UPS feature in the FF Power is fantastic. Has no problem keeping the power on this very old laptop. And just to prove that the power is coming from the inverter, there you have it. There's one thing I need to add about the sound of the FF Power. While it did make some noise discharging, I've been charging this for over three minutes at full speed and it's barely making any noise. The fans are turning at a very low speed there is warm air coming out. It's significantly warm, but it's whisper quiet. This thing is so quiet charging. It might be the quietest two kilowatt generator I've recorded to date. Let's go ahead and see how many decibels it is from a meter away. 43 decibels, that is whisper quiet. There's probably other things in this room making more noise than the FF power. So if you're one of those people that hate noise while charging, the FF power is something to look into. Now here's something else that's pretty cool about this power station. Not only do they offer a cigarette lighter socket that's 10 amps, but they also offer an XT60 output and a pair of 5521 barrel plugs. If you're a fan of using 12 volt appliances, you're really gonna like all the DC outputs on this. It's very rare to get an XT60 output. This is a very, very solid connection, high amps. So you can pretty much wire this into your van or RV to power 10 amp appliances. Now, just be aware 10 amps isn't very much power. It's only 120 watts at 12 volts, but you could essentially power a fantastic fan or a max air fan with this XT60 connector. You can also plug in a second refrigerator. Um, I can think of a lot of uses for an XT60 12 volt output. So very nice. Let's go ahead and test the 12 volt output on this and see, can it handle 
10 amps. So the 12 volt output on the FF power is regulated at 13.6 volts. Let's go ahead and see if it'll take 10 amps though. So it looks like no problem getting close to 10 amps and it's still putting out a very respectable 11.7 volts. Musician's favorite amp interference test, this is where we determine is the inverter in the FF power clean enough to run a power amp. So all I gotta do is turn the inverter on, it's gonna send power to the amp and we're gonna see is it noisy or not. Place your bets, three, two, one. And it is nice and clean. So that's all the noise it makes. It's a nice clean inverter. So if you wanna use an FF power to rock out in your band or run a PA system or ham radio operation, this is actually gonna be good for you. The FF power does have a pair of 100 watt power delivery outputs. So let's go ahead and run those two outputs into a pair of power bends, which can each take 100 watts of power delivery. See if this can do 200 watts output true. All right, it's looking perfect. We have a pair of power bends, each taking 100 watts through power delivery. And you can see right here, the FF power is outputting 200 watts through the pair of power delivery ports. This is a very well-rounded machine when it comes to USB. The only thing missing, of course, is you can't charge it through USB, which would be nice, but that's not an option. Now, of course, there's one last feature I haven't covered, and that is the very useful flashlight on something this heavy. Seriously, you're gonna put a little dinky flashlight on something that weighs this much? Okay, well, let's at least see what kind of modes it has. So first press, you have a uh, somewhat bright light. It's really not that bright. It's kind of a medium bright. Second press, oh yeah. Guess what that means? It means it's time to flag down our little buddies upstairs. Unfortunately, this thing's too heavy to pick up, so. Uh, hey, little buddies, come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. Okay, so what's the third press do? Hey, seizure mode. This is really gonna help my viewership. So there you have it. There are all the features of the FF Power. So what do I like about the FF Power P2001? Okay, let's be honest here. There is nothing groundbreaking about the P2001. It does do everything it's supposed to, but it's also pretty basic. If you don't need a fancy touchscreen or wireless charging, modular add-on batteries, high amp DC outputs, or even an app, but still, want to have a lot of USB support along with a banging noise-free inverter with quiet charging and the option to still flag down our little buddies upstairs for under 65 cents a watt hour, the FF power is a pretty serious contender for your dollar. Yeah, the capacity results are kind of bogus, but the best mid-range models out there still only rate about 85%. That makes the difference only 9%. And with the price as low as this model, I think some of the other features might make up for it, like the fast switching UPS, an inverter that can push well over 2000 watts and charge whisper quiet, still makes it a very good bang for the buck. Speaking of bucks, here comes the best part. Now normally the FF Power P2001 retails for $1499, which in of itself, is a great price for a 2000 watt power station. But of course, Hobotech viewers are not gonna pay anywhere near that for this product because I scored an exclusive $200 off coupon just for you guys, and that brings the price all the way down to $12.99. That's 64 cents per watt hour. Now to compare that price with what I just reviewed from EcoFlow, that costs 20 cents per watt hour more than this. And those battery capacity percentages were just about the same. They were mid to upper 70%. Now, in order to get this limited time 12.99 deal, you do need to use the link and discount code in the description of this video. Now, what about the competition? We all know that there are loads and loads of two kilowatt solar generators out there on the market. Prices and features vary wildly. Some are NMC batteries with 500 cycles, some are lithium iron phosphate with 3,500 or 4,000 cycles. The closest competitor that's lithium iron phosphate is probably gonna be the Blue Eddy AC200P, 
and that goes for $15.99. Now, the Bluetti does have quite a bit more bling tech than the FF Power, but the general specs are about the same. The FF Power charges quite a bit faster from AC wall power, while the Bluetti does charge faster with solar. You'll have to decide if saving $300 getting the FF Power over the Bluetti is worth giving up some of that bling. So who is this product really aimed at? These mid-sized power stations are made for mid-sized duty. You can run a residential refrigerator off this for about 24 hours, or run a small air conditioner or heater for several hours. They can power televisions of just about any size you can imagine. Most kitchen appliances, including hot plates and instant pots. Of course, it can run your top of the line Keurig, coffee maker, and just about anything else 120 volts that you can throw at it. Now, this is not designed to be a whole house backup solution. It's also not designed to run your off-grid cabin 365 days a year. What it's great for is weekend warrior style camping trips, hunkering down during an extended blackout, or something like getting juice to run power tools at a remote construction project. There are literally a thousand uses for something of this size and amount of power. Now, what about solar? The FF power can support up to 48 volts of solar at 500 watts. That is actually somewhat limiting. That means you can only run a pair of two or 300 watt portable panels in series or a single large residential panel. Now, I would recommend the Bouge RV 180 watt or 200 watt panels depending on your budget or the Renogy 320 watt panels. I like those so much, I am putting four of those Renogy panels on the top of my new RV. Now, all those solar panels I just mentioned are gonna be found on hobotech.tv slash Amazon click on solar kits it'll take you right down and show you all the solar panels with discount codes so if you're interested in the ff power p2001 the link and discount code is going to be in the description of the video below i'm also going to put a link right here that you can type in manually in your browser and a qr code right here that you could scan with your mobile device it's going to take you on over to the ff power website where you can check out the P2001 power station. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. If your search for a soldier is a pain in the neck, go to YouTube and watch Hobo Tech, cause he's the best in this, and he's a probing that, he's even been probing Odin his cat. If you want to get all the soldiers back, go to Hobo Tech. Yeah! RV Golf Guy, Von Rob, Brian Weaver, John Stacey, Soroka, Dr. Steve Eisenhower.